All right, so the AI world just got hit with what might be one of the boldest claims ever made in tech history. A Tokyo-based company called Integral AI says it has officially built the world's first AGI-capable model. And the funny thing about that phrasing is that AGI capable basically is AGI. Because if a system is capable of operating at a level above humans, that means it's already there. You can't really say something is 150 IQ capable unless it actually performs at that level. Capability isn't a hypothetical label, it shows up in the results. So when a company says their model is AGI capable, they're essentially claiming AGI without spelling it out too bluntly. In any case, that's a massive statement, because AGI has always been this almost mythical goal that tech founders and researchers have chased for decades. It's supposed to be the point where an AI system can learn anything a human can, reason like us, and even outperform us across every domain. And now someone's standing up and saying, yeah, we've done it. The company behind it, Integral AI, was founded by Jad Tarifi, an ex-Google AI veteran who spent nearly a decade inside Google building its earliest generative AI systems. He left Silicon Valley and set up shop in Japan, not by accident, but because of Japan's global dominance in robotics. According to him, this new system isn't just another iteration of GPT-style models. It's something built from the ground up to replicate how human intelligence actually works. And they're calling it the world's first AGI-capable model, a system that can learn new tasks without any pre-existing datasets, without human intervention, and without falling apart when placed in unfamiliar environments. Now, the boldness of that statement is one thing, but the way Integral AI defines AGI is actually what caught everyone's attention. They didn't just say, hey, it's smart like a human. They laid out three measurable criteria that in their view, mark the arrival of AGI. First is autonomous skill learning, meaning the system can teach itself completely new skills in totally new domains without being fed datasets or examples. It doesn't need human supervision, labels, or fine tuning. Second is safe and reliable mastery, which means the learning process has to happen without catastrophic failures or unintended consequences. And third is energy efficiency, which means the total energy cost for the system to learn a task should be roughly equal to or lower than the energy a human brain uses to learn that same skill. That last one is interesting because it sets a physical benchmark, not just computational performance, but biological equivalents. Tarifi says his engineers use those three principles as developmental cornerstones throughout the system's creation. According to the company, they've already tested it in real-world robotics trials, where robots successfully learned new skills on their own, in the real world, with zero human supervision. So what exactly makes this model different from everything else? Tarifi says it's built around an architecture that mirrors the human neocortex, the part of our brain responsible for conscious thought, perception, and language. Instead of being a single predictive model that just spits out words or images, Integral AI's system grows, abstracts, plans, and acts as one unified process. In simple terms, it doesn't just respond, it understands, plans, and executes. The company even showed demonstrations of robots autonomously developing skills, solving tasks in both 2D and 3D environments, and then applying that learning in physical space. In a press conference, Tarifi said, this marks the next chapter in the story of human civilization. He described the current system as still being in its infancy, but already capable of what he calls embodied superintelligence. The vision is to scale this model into a full-fledged intelligence that can interact with both digital and physical worlds as naturally as humans do. Before we jump deeper into the story, there's something I keep seeing in the comments. People asking how we manage to produce so much content so fast. Look, in 2025 alone, this channel pulled in 32 million views. That's not luck. That's not grinding harder. It's because every time a new AI breakthrough drops, we plug it straight into our workflow. Most people watch AI news and move on. We use it immediately. So we decided to release something we've never shared before. The 2026 AI Playbook. 1,000 prompts to dominate the AI era. This is how you go from just consuming AI content to actually using AI to build real, unfair advantages for yourself. Get your proposals done in 20 minutes instead of four hours. Launch that side business you keep putting off. Become the person in your company who gets twice as much done in half the time. Founding member access opens soon. Join the waitlist in the description. All right, back to the video. Now, the tech and AI world has heard plenty of world-first claims before. Remember Google's quantum supremacy announcement years ago? That stirred a similar storm and was immediately followed by competing claims and disputes over definitions. 
Integral AI seems aware of that, which is probably why they've been so specific about how they define AGI in the first place. Their website goes deep into how they plan to scale this system towards superintelligence. They break it down into three conceptual phases, universal simulators, universal operators, and genesis. The first step, universal simulators, focuses on how the AI builds a genuine world model. The problem with today's LLMs, even the most advanced ones like GPT-5 or Gemini-3, is that they're still pattern matchers. They're brilliant at predicting the next token or generating coherent text, but they don't have structured abstractions or an actual model of reality. According to Integral AI, this makes them inefficient and brittle. They can't reason about the world the way we do. Universal simulators, on the other hand, are designed to process information hierarchically, just like the human brain, building layered representations of reality that allow real reasoning and prediction. These simulators combine multiple modalities, vision, language, audio, and even sensor data from the physical world to form a unified world model. They continuously expand their capacity through lifelong learning and what Tarifi calls gradual expansion, meaning the system's size, context, window, and knowledge depth grow dynamically as needed. It's not a fixed model that you retrain once and freeze, it evolves. Then comes the second stage, universal operators. Once the model understands the world, it needs to act in it. Operators are what translate knowledge into action, planning, tool use, and continuous self-improvement. Tarifi's team says this part of the architecture lets the system plan at high levels, breaking tasks into goals and sub-goals the way humans naturally do. For example, if it were tasked with learning to cook, it wouldn't plan every hand movement individually, it would reason at a higher level, figuring out that it needs to boil water, then add ingredients, and only when necessary, dive into more granular control. These operators also allow the AI to use tools and even create new ones. When an existing API or robotic system isn't enough, the model can design and build its own tools. This is where the self-improving aspect comes in, the ability to invent its own means of solving new problems. On top of that, it performs what Integral AI calls active learning, setting its own experiments to fill knowledge gaps and master new areas safely and efficiently. In their demo, for instance, they showed it autonomously planning scientific experiments, like simulating drug discovery pipelines, running them safely through robots, and generating new knowledge from results. And then there's the final stage, scaling to superintelligence. The back-end infrastructure that makes all of this possible is called Genesis, a platform where these AGI agents can plan, act, and learn simultaneously in digital and physical environments. The front end is called Stream, which functions as the adaptive human interface. Basically, it's how we'd interact with these systems, not through prompts, but through natural, ongoing collaboration. But the most striking part of Tarifi's vision isn't technical, it's philosophical. Integral AI ties everything it does to a concept it calls freedom, defined as the ideal state of infinite agency and possibility. The goal isn't to build AI that replaces humans, but one that expands our collective capacity to act, create, and decide. This is tied to their concept of an alignment economy, where actions are judged not by profit or efficiency, but by how much they increase or decrease human freedom. If that sounds almost moral or spiritual, you're not wrong. Tarifi's AGI framework treats alignment as a social and ethical system, not a set of filters or rules. He believes the only true alignment mechanism that scales is one grounded in expanding human agency itself. That idea echoes throughout their public materials, and it's part of what separates their narrative from OpenAI's or Google DeepMind's approach, which have historically been more technical than philosophical. In a recent Socrates podcast, Tarifi went even deeper into the technical side. He explained that today's large language models, GPTs, Geminis, Claude, whatever, are prediction-only systems. They compress massive amounts of data, but they don't actually understand what they've learned. His new model, he claims, compresses knowledge into deep conceptual structures and can rederive understanding when needed, almost like a human recalling concepts instead of memorizing answers. He describes it as an abstraction first world model, a system that actually learns and reasons instead of predicting text. It plans actions, takes those actions, generates its own training data, dreams to consolidate memories, and updates itself continually without catastrophic, forgetting something that's always been a nightmare problem for machine learning. If that's all real, 
It's a big shift from how current AI works. Terafi even says this architecture could achieve human-level learning efficiency, meaning that the amount of energy it consumes to learn something is comparable to what our brains use. For context, modern models require thousands of GPUs burning through megawatts just to train on a single dataset. If Integral AI really found a way to get that same level of learning with near-human energy efficiency, it would be a seismic change for the industry. Terafi also mentioned something called the SuperNet, a future network of embodied AGI agents coordinating everything from factories to labs to households. Basically, a connected ecosystem of intelligent entities that can act as the operational backbone of civilization. He sees AGI not just as a digital brain, but as a fully embodied intelligence that can shape the real world directly. Whether integral AI truly achieved AGI or not, nobody's taking this lightly. Some experts are skeptical, as always, since there's no independent verification yet. But even the biggest players like Google and OpenAI have started acknowledging that we're closer than ever. And even the Vatican is now being pulled into the AGI conversation, with researchers trying to get Pope Leo XIV to take AGI seriously. A researcher named John Clark Levin has been leading a small but determined group of scientists, theologians, and policy experts. He calls them the AI Avengers, trying to convince Pope Leo XIV to start an official consultation on AGI. Their argument is simple. The Vatican's moral and global influence could help shape how humanity responds to artificial general intelligence before it's too late. Levin believes that if we wait for scientific certainty before acting, the danger window will already have passed. So, he's been quietly working his way through Vatican circles to get the Pope's attention. Apparently, Leo XIV, who's surprisingly tech-savvy and even has a math background, has already made AI one of the defining issues of his papacy. He's spoken repeatedly about the risks to human dignity, labor, and justice, and is even preparing a full AI-focused encyclical, which in church terms is a major teaching document. But so far, no mention of AGI specifically. That's where Levin's mission comes in. He's been traveling to Rome, attending conferences, and even hosting AGI-themed dinners and seminars with priests and scholars, trying to get them engaged in the deeper implications of general intelligence. The interesting part is, people are listening. Levin says there's genuine curiosity among the clergy, and even the Pope's inner circle seems open to learning more. He finally managed to deliver a personal letter addressed to Pope Leo, urging him to launch a formal scientific consultation on AGI through the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. It's the same process the Vatican once used to develop its position on climate issues. The letter praised Leo's efforts on AI ethics so far and offered the AI research community's help in understanding AGI's implications. He didn't get to hand it to the Pope directly, Vatican logistics are tricky, but it reached one of his secretaries, which means it's officially in circulation. Levin admits he's not expecting a direct reply soon, but he's hopeful. As he puts it, no one he's spoken to at the Vatican has dismissed AGI as heresy or nonsense. In fact, many have been surprisingly open to the discussion. If you think about it, it makes sense. The Vatican isn't a tech hub, but it has massive soft power, 1.4 billion Catholics, diplomatic channels across the planet, and a unique moral authority that transcends borders. It could end up being a neutral bridge between the East-West divide on AI, especially between the United States and China, where most frontier AI labs are based. AGI isn't just a technical problem anymore, it's political, ethical, and even spiritual, and it's spreading fast. Over at Google DeepMind, Demis Hassabis, who's already been one of the leading figures in AI for over a decade, recently said that AGI is on the horizon. In his words, it will be the most transformative moment in human history. He's been doubling down on the idea that we could reach AGI by 2030, maybe sooner. At the Axios AI Plus Summit in San Francisco, Hassabis pointed out that the next big step in this race is something he calls world models, systems that don't just process text or pixels, but actually model how the physical world works. That's a fascinating overlap, because Integral AI's architecture, with its universal simulators and embodied agents, is literally built on that same concept. Everyone seems to be converging on this idea that the key to true general intelligence lies in creating AI systems that can understand and predict the real world, not just generate data about it. So on one side, you've got DeepMind warning that AGI is almost here. On another, a Tokyo startup claiming it's already done. And halfway across the world, the Vatican is preparing to weigh in on what it might mean for human civilization. If nothing else, that should tell you just how close we're getting to the edge of something historic. Whatever happens next, it's clear the conversation around AGI has changed forever. The prototypes are here, 
the moral discussions are beginning, and the world is scrambling to understand what comes next. So here's the part I keep thinking about. If this is AGI, who's actually in control of it? Drop your thoughts below. I'm genuinely curious where you stand on this. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the like button so you don't miss what comes next. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.